just so you know, here's my point, okay? I'm up there, and, and I'm looking over. I'm standing on a cliff on top of a mountain, looking over the valleys and peaks and the water and the mountains, and it's awesome. And I am reminded of a concept, which is one of the five secret foundations of power called Fudoshin. Fudoshin means the immovable mind, and that's laser-like focus. Reminded me of the story of Lee and Joe. Lee was a very accomplished archer, and he could shoot the apple off the top of your head, no problem. Cut that thing clean in half. So Joe said, no problem, buddy. Let's take it up top to the mountain and go stand on the cliff edge. Just on your heels and hang your feet and the balls of your feet over the cliff edge. And go ahead and see if you can still do that shot. Okay? That, my friends, having the ability to retain your focused mind and have an unmovable mind, that is Fudoshin. And it's very powerful. Takuan Soho, the author of the samurai classic, The Unfettered Mind, said that keeping the mind tranquil as it moves in the midst of the eight directions in uproar and commotion, that's true tranquility. Tranquility in tranquility is not true tranquility. Tranquility in action is true tranquility. Okay, and that is Fudoshin. And it's one of the five secret power foundations. What are those foundations? Well, number one is the indomitable spirit. And that's another one we're going to talk on today. Okay, number two is superior skills. Superior skills. Number three is tactical intuition. Number four is masterful strategy. Notice I didn't say strategy. What did I say? And number five is Fudoshin, which is laser-like focus. And I've just shared with you what that is. And in the Martial Mastery course, we show you how to get it and do it for yourself. Matter of fact, the August 2011 issue of Black Belt, the editor asked, what should the requirements be for a black belt? My answer, which is in that issue, okay, I said there are five requirements for a true black belt. Number one is the indomitable spirit. Now, why would I put the indomitable spirit before, say, physical fighting, which is certainly a part of a black belt, or having your techniques down and things like that? Because the indomitable spirit is, first and foremost, for true mastery of anything, even life itself is the indomitable spirit. Now, the dictionary defines indomitable as impossible to subdue or defeat. I call it impossible to dominate because a warrior goes through life with a spirit so strong that he is impossible to defeat and dominate. When you're willing to endure any hardship without letting it destroy you, when you have a will, when you will, Remain strong in spirit and mighty in the face of any situation. When you have that frame of mind and refuse to let anything destroy you, and you go after your goals with Fudoshin, that's an indomitable spirit, and life becomes your playground. You have true self-mastery. You have power. So when you take those... Now, I just gave you the five secret power foundations, and I've talked about Fudoshin. And now I've, I've told you what the indomitable spirit is. And in the martial mastery course, we show you just how to get it. So it's rock solid. Um, and, and as well, I talked about the five requirements of a black belt. And I encourage all of you in the, in the five requirements of a black belt, okay, number one being the indomitable spirit. Number two is dynamic physical fighting skill, dynamic fighting skill. Now, most people stop right there. They think that's it. You, you got your techniques. You got your katas. Um... Uh, can you fight? And, but there's much, that is a part of it, but it is not it. Okay, the indomitable spirit, number one. Physical fighting skill, dynamic physical fighting skill. Got to be dynamic, that's number two. Number three is robust physical fitness. These are the five requirements for a black belt. You should be writing them down, pen and paper. So number three is robust physical fitness. Now, I've known some black belts who are pot-bellied, who could barely walk across a room without breaking a sweat and being short of breath. Come on. Now in the martial mastery course we show you how to, some people have had trouble for years beating the pot belly, we show you how to beat it. Okay, because if you're going to be a real black belt, let's have it. Let's be it. Let's be all of it. Okay? So we show you how. Number four is a calm and sharp mind. A calm and sharp mind. And I know famous 
martial arts instructors and black belts, I mean world famous, who, who often only have uh, maybe one or two of these five, but a calm and sharp mind. They don't have calm and sharp minds. This is important. Now, number five is Jin, which is benevolence or respect for others. That one's lacking, sadly, greatly amongst uh, many black belts. So if you're searching for a black belt teacher, look for these five qualities. If you're a, a trainer, an instructor, and you're granting someone a black belt, look for these five qualities. An indomitable spirit, dynamic physical fighting skill, robust physical health, a calm and sharp mind, and Jin, which is one of the seven virtues, means benevolence and respect for others. You find that, you find that, and you've got yourself a black belt, whether you're looking for one or whether you're, you're evaluating one, okay? Whether you want to get a black belt or whether you're given one, okay? Now, the five secret power foundations, I've talked about those as well. We'll go into them further later this week. But what you're about to hear right now is a seminar in which a couple guys came up and talked about how martial mastery had changed their life. They said, point blank, it changed my life. And they talked about how they got success in so many ways, ways that even surprised me. And then I shared a bit about Fudoshin and the vision of how martial mastery came about. So I want you to enjoy this, and I'll talk to you soon, my friends. Got the information, studied it, went through it about a week. Uh, my mindset changed. I used to go to my boss's office, and he used to, in a way, make me do what he wanted me to do, and I had no control over it. After studying it and uh, coming back to his office, his market went down. I, in a way, influenced him to join my new company, and he's the vice president. He's a multimillionaire. It seemed so easily and effortlessly because I knew what he was doing. I knew when he was lying, and whenever he tried to overpower me, I would just hold silence so I would not... Uh, be affected by praise or prosecution. So until he gave in, and the, um, the end of the story is he did sign up in my new company. Awesome. Okay. Everything I ever did that was successful in life, I was told by friend and foe alike that you can't do that. Okay. Now, because I did it, there are people that I've never met up until today, and there are many people that I, I meet that I had never met before, who, whose lives were benefited, whose lives were changed, who were blessed. The word blessing, what does that mean, by the way? It means empowered to prosper. And someone says, God bless you. you know? <laughs> they don't know what they're saying. You know? They think, will the tooth fairy you know, give you some, some pixie dust? <laughs> okay, but it means empowered to prosper. So other, others have been empowered to prosper. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've been empowered... I, I love what I do, and I have a passion for it. I have a vision, okay? And, and, and martial mastery was a vision. And, and so I, I stayed true to my vision, okay? and, and I remained in food ocean once I knew that the vision was true. And, and so as a result of that, like dropping a rock in a pond, the ripples of that in other people's lives have been very positive. There's been a positive energy all over the world, thanks to the fact that I doubted the naysayers. And here Yates was talking about how, in, in spite of a naysayer, he went and got his venture capital funding, and he talks about the students he had and the lady who came and worked for him, and all, all of the, those ripples, those positive ripples in the world. And, and we're, we're all following our vision. We're all aligned and, and tapping in to that power. Then, and we're all making positive ripples that the world's a very different place. So now you just learn how to save the world, too. <laughs> But that's the thing, is, is to be able to remain true to your vision. And, and in all of the ancient texts, which are mostly misunderstood, including the most famous one here in America, the Bible, uh, there's a, a passage that says, without a vision, the people will perish. Okay? Had, had I not had the vision, I would have perished in a way. Maybe not physically, but energetically, you know, and, and consign myself to, to a, a limiting place, but I expanded and multiplied. There's another passage in there, multiply and inherit the earth. Okay? So, so now, now I'm not preaching. I'm just, that's another ancient text that, that definitely has some, some truth and some wisdom, but which is mostly misunderstood and misapplied. And, and on the other side, there are people who hear that and, and right away 
think that I'm I'm being evangelical. I'm not. I'm certainly not. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> big big hairdos and and flashy robes. No. So so there's a, that was a point in my story to tie in with what Yates said earlier, and it's it's an energetic an energetic influence on the world. And, and, and all of you have been influenced positively by different teachers, different things that you discovered. You get your own sights, own insights, own sights, your own insights and intuitions as well. Okay? And you find a way to, to add what is uniquely your own. Because I hear different stories about how different people use the information in different ways that I would have never even thought of. Okay? So we're going to have grand ultimate power and body strength right now in a way that, that, that will multiply your power and your energy. And then we're going to combine it with a directional awareness so you're, you're aware in all the directions.